Hey everyone, Madrybrad here. Uh, I'm- I'm a little bit sick. <laughs> I'll just say that right now. I've been doing my vocal stuff though, did my vocal warm-ups, I think I'm good. Pokemon Fire Red with only flying types was real fun. Let's follow that up with another type-specific run. Today's the day that we figure out would I be able to beat Pokemon Red with a team of only water types. Okay, so you know the drill from the flying type run, right? We can only use one type, but what makes this so exciting is how many choices we get. With the flying type run, there were maybe 10 Pokemon to choose from, not counting whole evolutionary lines as separate. With water types, I think I'm seeing 16. So with only six to pick from for a full team by the end, I'm looking forward to this, we've got some choice. The only thing is that we can't get our hands on most water types until we either have fishing rods or surf. So the team is gonna have to stay small until we're past Pokemon Tower. Let's try and get that done early. Like always, I'm writing this script as I go through with the challenge, so all this part is being written before I've started. Everyone comment down below and guess if I can win or not. I'm sure I can, I'm just excited to make a full team. I like a lot of Gen 1 water type Pokemon. Let's explain the rules. In combat, I can only use water type Pokemon. I'll need to use other Pokemon for HMs, but I won't be allowed to use any of those Pokemon in battle. No glitches or exploits, no items in battle, only Pokeballs and items outside of combat are allowed. Also, if you enjoy the video, be sure to like, subscribe, and ring the bell for more. Let's do this. No need for the randomizer on this one, I may as well just start with Squirtle. It's gonna be the only water type we have for a real long time, but I've already planned things out so that we can rush to getting our second Pokemon as fast as possible. Squirtle's gonna get pretty strong quickly, so I'm not too worried about the earliest of the early game fights. I figure that the first rival fight could be hard, but otherwise it should be pretty smooth sailing for a while. We can skip the Electric Gym and Grass Gym just by going straight from the SSN through Rock Tunnel to get our first water type. I'll leave what it is as a surprise, but I'm sure some of you have already thought of it. It's one of the very few water types you can get before you get the Rods or Surf, so I'm excited. Let's go beat that Rock Gym. Yeah, we just totally squashed the whole thing with Bubble. It would require active god levels of bad 256 glitch luck for us to have lost that fight. Let's keep moving. All right, so we're level 15 by the time we beat the Rock Gym, so we'll absolutely be evolved by the time we get to our rival. That gives me hope that the rival fight will be pretty easy, and if so, then we've got some smooth sailing. If the next rival fight is easy, then the SSN will for sure be easy. As long as we can beat our rival on the SSN to get cut, and beat the Water Gym to use cut outside of battle, then I can walk straight to where we get our next Pokemon. I guess I could buy the Magikarp at the Poke Center before Mount Moon to get the Water Onyx early, but I kind of want to make it harder on myself. No Water Onyx. I got other plans. On our way through, though, I took the Helix Fossil. I knew that if I didn't say what I took, you'd all ask. Actually, now that I think about it, everyone ask anyway. Comments are good for the YouTube algorithm. On the other side, I decided to go for the Water Gym first, but it didn't work out great. Star you was easy with a few tail whips and tackle, but star me was too much. Plus, it crits a lot since it's Gen 1 and Starmie is fast. It really doesn't help that Misty always uses X Defend, so we have to use a lot more Tail Whips than normal. Maybe we can just go beat our rival first. So we did beat him after losing a few tries early to Sand Attack, but it's really just because of Gen 1 AI. Putting aside weird stuff like getting the 256 glitch to miss a water gun against Rattata, the real point when he absolutely could have beaten us was against Bulbasaur. He could have just used Vine Whip a few times and we'd have gone down, but instead he spammed Growl. We were hardly hurting him and actually had to resort to Water Gun but his absolute refusal to hurt us meant that we won eventually. That means I'm doing Nugget Bridge, and that's awesome, because I'm confident that clearing out the northern route will give me enough experience to take out the Water Gym. Once that's done, we can just grab those great TMs from the SSN, beat our rival, get the Cut HM, and then go get ourselves a new Pokémon. Okay, back at the Water Gym at level 27, and now we have Bite, so it's super easy to take them out. Plus, the 256 glitch kicked in, so Starmie missed a tackle. It didn't matter at all, but at least it was funny. That gets us the TM for Bubble Beam, and I'm gonna use it right away. No point in saving it for something else when by the time we have lots of Pokémon to choose from, we'll just be teaching them all Surf anyway. That means I'm clearing out the SSN. Honestly, I don't bother fighting quite every trainer here. I mostly just want to get the good items like the Rest and Body Slam TMs. Most Gen 1 Pokémon can learn Rest, and quite a few can learn Body Slam too, so I figure I'll be teaching it to someone on our team eventually? Probably? Hey, the rival fight on here is usually easy, right? Once we win, we can get a new Pokémon. Let's see how that goes. 
Okay, this was a breeze. Wartortal did the entire fight on his own and was hardly taking any damage from their hits. Even Ivysaur at the end just blew it by using Leech Seed. Easy fight. With that win, we're on the road again. Now, it's a bit of a long walk, but there is finally a Water-type Pokémon that I can get my hands on. It's a really good one, too, so I'm pumped. On our way, though, this is a great time to talk to you about this video's sponsor, Chimera. So, uh, it's March when I'm writing this, and winter is kind of gone, but keeps threatening to come back. It's been a real, real weird weather year. That leads me to believe that hoodies are probably the right way to go right now, and would you look at that? New Chimera web design, pretty cool. I used to always say that I'm a zip-up hoodie kind of guy, and normally I am, but the pullover really won me over this winter. It's super soft, super warm, and when I'm done wearing it, I can throw it on my lap and Sabu will take a nap in it because he's absolutely precious. Plus, I have the white pullover, so it's like a cloaking device for him. So if you want to support the channel and look good while doing it, then hit up the link in the description if you want to go to Chimera and pick up something warm to wear this winter. Uh... If it's even still winter anymore. If you're gonna go pick up something, then make sure to use the promo code MADRYBREAD at checkout to get 10% off your order and to let them know that I sent you. Now let's go get some new Pokemon. Now that we're on the other side, I go ahead and pick up a free Eevee from Celadon City and then give it a Water Stone from the nearby store right away to evolve it into a Vaporeon. This is a great Pokemon in general, but it's especially good compared to what Gen 1 has to offer. It may not have any great moves until I get my hands on that Surf HM, but that's fine. I'm gonna level it up a little bit and Rocket Hideout right away, and then see if it's strong enough to take out Giovanni. As soon as we take out Giovanni and our rival, we can get our hands on the Super Rod and thus more Pokémon. So let's get it done. Giovanni was super easy, as expected. I had to grind Vaporeon to level 31 so that it could learn Water Gun because I forgot to pick up the TM earlier in the game, but that's fine. It was able to win the whole fight easily. Next is the Pokemon Tower Rival Fight, and like usual, this was an easy one. We almost ended up winning the entire fight just with Vaporeon, but I had to switch to Wartortle when Ivysaur used Leech Seed so that we could avoid him healing back up. His Vine Whips were hardly doing anything to us though, so we really couldn't have lost. Alright, now that we have the Super Rod, I went ahead and fished around to catch a whole three new members of the team. Shelder, Staryu, and Slowpoke. Shelter is going to have the highest defense in the game when he evolves. Staryu is going to become Starmie, and that's just an incredible Pokemon overall. And Slowpoke learns Amnesia, a move that's completely broken in Gen 1. It's like using Calm Mind twice in one turn. It's insane. I also got the HM for Surf and taught it to the entire team because I'd be crazy not to. Surf is just an awesome move. Let's go see if we can beat the Electric Gym with a bunch of untrained fresh catches. Well, we won, but the new catches weren't really doing it yet. They got a little bit of experience and some knockouts, but really was up to Vaporeon to finish the fight. It might take a little while before these guys have enough experience to really pull their weight. Hey, if we get to set up our island, then that would be a really great place to quickly grind them up. Maybe we're ready to just beat the Poison Gym real quick if we can surf there. Who knows, Koka might just blow up half his team on our low-leveled new catches. Okay, first try at the Poison Gym, and this is a bit of a long one. The tactic is just to use my fresh catches until they faint, then send in something stronger like Blastoise or Vaporeon to finish it off. We did get poisoned on Blastoise from doing this, but as long as we don't overuse them, then it's fine. As soon as we got down to the last wheezing, I just kept sending in our weakest Pokémon until he blew himself up. A classic Koga ending. With that done, I surf straight to Cinnabar, then use the Seafoam Islands to catch Seal, our last Pokemon. I'm a huge fan of Seal and Dugong, so I'm pumped to finally get to use one of these in a challenge run. Now, obviously, I'm gonna go do the Fire Gym early, but half the team needs some leveling up, so I'm gonna grind in the Pokemon Mansion. I'll make sure to pick up the TM for Blizzard while I'm in there, because Gen 1 Blizzard is insane. 120 power with 90 accuracy. You can't pass that up. Also, I decided to evolve Shelter into Cloister with a Water Stone. I was gonna wait until I got Ice Beam, but I realized I may as well just teach it Ice Beam with that cheap TM you get in Celadon for the price of a drink and evolve it early for that incredible defense. I'll evolve Staryu with a Stone too, but not until it hits level 27 for Recover. You know what? I'll get it to level 27, evolve it, teach it Psychic with a TM, and then maybe we could use it to beat the Fire Gym. Yep, Fire Gym was super easy. Now, we couldn't do it all with Starmie, since it's still a weight lower level than them, it took a lot of damage from takedown, but obviously we have more leveled up Pokémon that could handle the rest of the fight perfectly fine. I mean, 
You guys have seen me catch a tentacle from outside of the gym, walk in, and then win with it. Of course Gen 1 Blaine is a breeze in a water type run. I guess that means we're doing Sylphco. I really don't know how the rival fight in here is gonna go. On one hand, we have some ice moves to handle Venusaur, but our levels are pretty lopsided still. Our strongest Pokémon are only in the high level 30s, but are evolved and pretty strong. But the low level ones are like half of the level of the wild stuff on Cinnabar. Slowpoke especially has hardly gotten any experience. I'm gonna try and switch train them up a bit more before I fight the rival, but I've got the feeling that some Pokémon are just gonna have to lag behind. Personally, I think I'm gonna put a little bit less experience on Blastoise, and try to get stuff like Cloyster and Vaporeon a little more experience. They're cool Pokémon, and I don't get to use them much. Let's have some fun with this. Right away, Pidgeot is faster than us, but wasted his first turn with Whirlwind, that does nothing in trainer battles in this game, so we just took him down in two blizzards with us hardly getting hurt. Water Onyx is a one-shot with a critical Thunderbolt, and next is Growlithe, who is obviously a one-shot with Surf. Next was Alakazam, though, and we had no great answer, so I sent in Vaporeon to spam Quick Attack, knowing that we're tanky enough to take a few hits. The problem is, he was out healing us. It was to the point that I switched to using Sand Attack, but we got confused for ages, so we hardly made use of it. In the end, we lucked out on a critical Surf that nearly fainted him, then used another Surf to finish it off while he was using a regular potion that he has for some reason. Last is his Venusaur, so I start just sending in all of our Ice Move users one by one. Seal did some okay damage before going down, Vaporeon was too slow to land a hit, but Starmie easily came in and finished it with Psychic. Really not a bad fight, we won at a lower level than them. Giovanni right after was literally a sweep with our Seal, who's the newest member of our team by the way. It even got us to the right level to evolve! That's awesome! I can see the Psychic Gym being a bit hard though, what with their high special stats. First was Kadabra, who I just brute forced with strength. Weirdly enough, he didn't get one shot and landed a hit on Blastoise before going down. Mr. Mime used Light Screen, and it doesn't carry over from Pokémon to Pokémon in this game, so we easily took him out. Venomoth put up a bigger fight though, paralyzing us and landing a couple of hits before we could take it out. I switched to Vaporeon to deal with Alakazam, and things started great with him using Psy Wave and Reflect, when suddenly he started spamming Recover while we were trying to make him faint. Now as far as I'm aware, Sabrina's AI doesn't tell Alakazam to heal when his health is low, so this may have literally just been it picking Recover at random a ton of times in a row at the exact moment that it would be the most annoying, uh, just by coincidence. We won, but Sabrina gets points for being as annoying as possible on the way out. Oh yeah, and I forgot about the Grass Gym till right near the end. The funny part is that we still have a Pokemon faint because Gen 1 Razor Leaf crits like you wouldn't believe. Still, we won just fine, mostly just using strength with Blastoise. Last for the gyms is the Ground Gym, and I beat the entire thing with Cloyster that is more than 10 levels lower than his team. It's kind of impressive to watch. Yeah, they'd have taken us out if they played better, but it's crazy to watch Cloyster's high defense in action. Time for the rival fight, and they are a way higher level than us. Despite that, Pidgeot went down to Cloyster without even hitting us once. Rhydon was a one-shot with Surf, and third was Water Onyx, who survived Thunderbolt, bit us for a decent bit of damage, then went down. Growlithe is next, and of course he's a one-shot with Surf, so I take the chance to heal back up with Recover first. Second from last is Alakazam. Now, unlike the last rifle fight where we got lucky and took it down with Vaporeon, he was absolutely hammering us with strong moves this time. We ended up losing a big chunk of our team before he finally spammed Reflect enough times to let us get the win. That's when it happened. His last Pokémon is a Venusaur that's level 53, while our whole team is in their level 30s. One by one, he demolished the entire team until I had his Venusaur at red health with a special drop, just for him to crit a Razor Leaf to take out Starmie. If he just used Vine Whip one more time, I'd have won? Okay, I got the whole team up to the reasonable, but still quite a bit lower than their level of 40. I think this is possible, but here's what nearly every attempt looks like. It's easy until Alakazam, who I have to get somewhat lucky to beat without losing too many Pokémon, but what it really comes down to is Venusaur. It's random if you uses Vine Whip or Razor Leaf, but the damage difference is massive. He crits nearly every time with Razor Leaf. I think it's something crazy like a 90% chance of critting because of his speed. Vine Whip, on the other hand, isn't that bad at all. 
We only need to hit a few times with Blizzard or Psychic, but he's been using Razor Leaf way too much. I'm gonna try a handful of times. This has to be possible. Okay, literally the next try after I typed up that whole thing about how he keeps using Razor Leaf, I get this try where he uses Vine Whip twice, so we just use two Blizzards and win. Well, I guess I can't complain. Okay, we're on our way to the Elite Four, but I can't possibly be ready yet, right? Our Pokémon are level 40. We were 13 levels lower than that Venusaur. I don't think we could possibly get a win like this. It would take forever to grind the entire team up to a reasonable level, but I don't really want to just grind a few Pokémon and leave the rest lagging behind. That makes for a less fun run. Well, we're getting by at a really low level anyway, so stat experience be damned, Rare Candies is the way to go here. It'll mean that we're a bit weaker since stat experience takes much longer to max out than effort values, and thus we won't have a ton of it on some of our Pokémon. But I'm fine with making the run harder if that means that we get to use the full team and thus make it a bit funner. The champ uses Pokémon in the mid-level 60s. Let's get our Pokémon up to level 50 and just see how things go. I'll also hunt around and get some last minute TMs. I'm thinking Dig and Earthquake for Slowbro and Blastoise would be a good idea. Now that we're at the Elite Four, let's take a look at our team. I mean, I think our chances of winning the entire run at this level is low, but we won the last two rival fights about 15 levels below his as well, so maybe this can still work. Slowbro has Amnesia. I can possibly do some shenanigans with that. Make your final guesses on if we can win this or not. Let's do this. First is Ice Trainer Lorelei. This fight was mostly just us easily taking them down with Starmie's Thunderbolt until Jinx. I took that as my chance to use three Amnesias and fight back, and although it took out Jinx, it wasn't enough to beat Lapras. I finished it easily with Starmie and was never really in danger, but it sucks that we don't have Psychic on Slowbro yet. That's still a few levels away. He learns it really late. Second is Fighting Trainer Bruno. Obviously, this is no issue at all. Psychic with Starmie for the fighting types, and Surf for both Onyx. Total sweep. Third is Ghost Trainer Agatha. Yet another super easy sweep. One Gengar survived long enough to poison us, but we didn't actually end up taking any damage from it. The sweep has got to end next, though. You're right? Fourth is Dragon Trainer Lance. Right away, Water Onyx doesn't land a hit on us because Thunderbolt brings him to a sliver, and then he illegally uses a Hyper Potion as the second move of the round. He did hit a Dragon Rage on the second turn, though, so he got some damage in. For the first Dragonair, I decided to brute force it with Blastoise and save the Ice Move users for the more dangerous Dragonite. It worked pretty well, but thanks to an unlucky crit from their slam, Blastoise went down and Starmie had to finish it. Thankfully, he was using Hyper Potion, so I had the chance to heal up a bunch, although we did get hit before he went down. The second Dragonair was faster, as I just hit Psychic twice to knock it out, but not before recovering a bit. Second from last is Aerodactyl, so I sent in Cloyster. We got crit, but he still tanked it pretty well, and we took him out in return. Last was Dragonite, so right away I started using Ice Beam. It didn't even take a crit? I just took him out in one hit? I'm a bit surprised. Finally, the Pokémon Champion. Pidgeot is first, but we crit with our opening Thunderbolt for a one-shot. Alakazam is second, though, and right away he was healing more than we could hurt him, so all I could do was spam Surf and hope for the best. It was fine, though, we don't take much damage from his psychic moves, so as soon as he tried to hurt us instead of healing, we took him out. Rhydon was a one-shot with Surf, and fourth is Water Onyx, who was nearly a one-shot with Thunderbolt, but then he used Leer! I love that the Pokémon Champion has two different Pokémon that still use Leer. We take him out, and next is Arcanine, who's a solid 10 levels higher than us. Nearly went down to Surf, used a full restore, almost went down to Surf again, used Roar for no reason, and then fainted. It was a valiant effort, still better than how Blaine fought. Last was Venusaur, but he used Mega Drain instead of Razor Leaf, so we just two-shot him with Psychic. Well, that was easy. We didn't have a single one of our Pokémon faint in the last fight. That was awesome. I was kind of worried that maybe the fact that most of the Pokémon we got were in the same general part of the game, that we'd only end up using a few Pokémon, but I feel like by the end most of them were useful again. Either than maybe Slowbro, I probably didn't use him enough. Man, these team runs have been awesome. I hope you guys liked that run. The next Pokémon Challenge should be up next week on Saturday, like usual, with Pokémon Black with one Drifloon. Haven't done a solo run in a while, it's about time I do one. As always, I'm looking forward to your suggestions in the comments, in the Challenge Request section of my Discord channel, and on Twitter. Subscribe, ring the bell, stay tuned. Outro time. I have been on the verge of getting sick for like three weeks now. I've been around people who are sick. 
I used to get sick constantly way back in the day, like back in school and stuff. Back when I was in school, I used to get sick all of the time. And like I'm healthier now, you know, I, I, I walk, I work out, I eat healthier and stuff now. So maybe my immune system is better than it was back then and I've just been fighting this forever. But like when I woke up this morning, you know when you have those like, when you wake up in the morning and you swallow and you have that kind of like painful feeling in the soft palate in the back top of your mouth, right? It's like a thirsty pain. You know what I'm talking about? I've been fighting that for like two mornings and then this morning, it was real bad. I was worried I was gonna start having like a hoarse throat and stuff while I did this voiceover, but no, um, it, it's actually felt pretty good. I've been trying to be very intentional. I've been trying to be very intentional about speaking through like the mask of my face so that I sound less nasally because I am very congested right now. But um, I'm congested for like every voiceover I do on some level. I just have really bad sinuses. So, uh, you know, don't know how nasally I sounded today. I guess I'll hear it when I edit this video back. So I'll find out. Let me know in the comment section if I sounded horrifically sick, but I'm sure I've sounded sicker before in recordings. Anyway, I should go make something to eat. Thank you everybody so much for watching and until next time, have a nice day.